Hi everyone, it's Maria. Welcome to my channel, Life in Yakutia. Today I'm going to make my first Q&A video. I received a lot of interesting questions and there were three types of questions which were asked more than others. It's a question about climate change, about heating system and also about water supply. And I'm going to make three different videos about these uh, questions because I want to answer them in detail. Today I'm going, I'm going to answer short questions. hope that this video will be interesting and informative for you. So, um, are there a lot of things to do in Yakutia? Are there cinemas, theaters, libraries, theme parks? We have uh, cinemas, theaters, libraries, restaurants, shopping malls, we have bowling, we have ice skating stadiums, we have, I don't know, snowboarding uh, hills, we have skiing places, we have I don't know, we have a lot of things to do. Are people in Yakutia typically multilingual? If so, what languages people usually speak? As I mentioned in one of my videos, uh, Yakut people, Saha people speak two languages. We speak Saha and Russian. And there are smaller ethnicities, Evan, Evenk, Yukagir, Dalgan and some others. The, those people speak three languages. They speak their own Evan, for example, they speak Saha language and they speak Russian language, so they are trilingual. For you personally, from what temperature do you consider it's already cold in winter based on your experience as a Yakut woman? If I have proper clothes, um, before negative 40 it's not cold, it's just fine, it's not real winter temperature for me. Um, between negative 40 and negative 48 it's it's quite okay, yeah, it's fine. And below negative 48, it's cold for me. And I, I, I really feel every degree below negative 48, like negative 49, negative 50, negative 52, yeah. Below negative 52, it's freezing cold for me. Uh, what is the common profession in Yakutia? We have professions like everywhere else in the world, like doctors, teachers, policemen, firemen, um, I don't know, drivers, software developers, yeah, all kind of professions are here. And also some traditional professions, for example, horse breeders, uh, artisans, people who make knives, people who make um, like things from mammoth tusks. It's also a yeah, traditional profession of Yakut people. Do Yakuts like foreigners? Yeah, Yakut people are very hospitable and they are very welcoming. And if you are nice and friendly and respectful, yeah, Yakut people actually can make you feel like your home. <laughs> yes, Yakut people like foreigners. Uh, where is the closest airport? The closest airport is right here in Yakutsk. It's like 20 minutes uh, by car from the city center. Uh, are there fast food restaurants in Yakutia? What types of fast food restaurants are there? Pizza, burgers, fried chicken or... yeah. We have a lot of fast food restaurants and like we have pizza, burgers, fried chicken, fried french fries and fast noodles, sushi, yeah, yeah a lot. We have KFC, we have Burger King, and yeah, a lot of fast food restaurants here. Will hotel and restaurant staff understand English? Uh, probably yes, but it depends on the rating of a host hotel or re restaurant. Like the high rating for sure, 100% they will understand. But like cheaper, more cheaper prices, mm, it really depends. When is the best season to visit Yakutia? It really depends on what do you want to experience. If, if you want to feel freezing cold, it's better to come in December or January. These are the coldest months. But if you come in summer, you can come to see our national festival, Uher. 
uh, a lot of tourists come just to visit this festival because it's so nice, it's so authentic. And also people who like active uh, sport, people who like hiking, who like fishing, they also come to visit Yakutia in summer. Yakutia in summer is, is really nice. What process does a visitor go through when they visit in winter to adjust the cold temperature? There is no any special process. The only thing is it's really important to have good clothes. If, if you want, you can buy it where you live, but it's, it's easy to buy it, to find like relatively cheap warm clothes in Yakutsk too. Do most people have babies in hospital? or is there some home birth? I, I don't know the precise number, but I think 99% of women give birth at, in the hospital. Are there any foods of pro or products that you can't get in your kutia that you would love to try? Well, I really can say that I can find anything here, even junk food from America. <laughs> yeah. Just, I don't know, like, we even can buy the emu egg here, <laughs> from Australia. So, I don't know, but we would love to try fresh and, and delicious tropical fruits. Has it ever been so cold that everything shut down, even for adults? No. It has, as far as I know, it has never been so cold that everything shut down and we work at any temperature. One of the most important holidays for people in Yakutia, it's definitely Uhur. Uhur is a, it's a, our national festival, it's celebrated in, on 21st of June when we have the longest day and the shortest night. It's a new year for Yakut people and in Yakutsk, we, it's like a huge festival. A lot of people come to see it and um, a lot of tourists come to see it. And for example, I think in two, two years ago, there were more than 200,000 people on that festival. It's really nice. Like we all wear our traditional clothes. We eat our traditional food. We all gather together. We, we sing, we dance. We, we see how our strongest men compete and yeah, a lot of concerts, the traditional um, customs, traditional rituals. It's really, really yeah, nice. Unfortunately, last year due to pandemic, we didn't have a hug. It was cancelled, but yeah, I hope this year we, could, we can celebrate it. I hope. <laughs> Do you have any unique social customs in Sahar Republic which aren't commonplace in the rest of the world? Yeah, a lot. A lot of customs. And for example, every time when we go to the nature to fish, to hunt, to pick berries or just to have picnic, we always feed the nature. It's really important. Like The best will be to feed the nature with uh, Yakut pancakes. but bread with butter also good but no no meat and the oldest person in the group he takes this food and put it on the ground and ask nature please share with us and i think it's a really nice custom because it makes us mm, more conscious to it makes us appreciate what nature gives to us reminding that we are only guests in this world we are not owners of this planet. Have you traveled to other countries? I visited around 20 countries for now and most of them are in Europe. Is it difficult for you if you are in much warmer weather? Um, I was in Egypt in July and it was fine. Like, it wasn't very hard for me. Kutia in summer is pretty hard. Like, maybe some of you don't know, but we have like positive 35, 38 degrees in summer and it's it's hot. Are there any colleges or universities in Yakutsk? Yes, we have a few colleges and universities and I'm currently studying at Northeastern Federal University. I'm studying masters and 
many many people, many Yakut people choose universities in Yakutsk because it's co it's close to our house. What temperature do you usually keep your homes in winter on average? So we have a home thermometer and I don't know if you can see it or not, it's 23.3 uh, degrees Celsius. Normally it's like 23, 24, 25. Yeah, and what is your ideal or favorite temperature to be outside? <laughs> For me, ideal is 18 or 20. And we have just uh, several days when it's like that, in May and in August. And before it's too cold, after it's too hot in May. <laughs> Maybe like one week of 18 and 20. But you know, if the whole year was 18 or 20, I wouldn't appreciate it. So I'm grateful for that several days. <laughs> Is there a lot of tourism in Yakutia? Where do you, where do most of tourists come from? Every year we have more tourists. Um, Yakutia is getting more popular tourist destination, um, but I wouldn't say we have a lot. Well, just a few, and most of them come actually from Russia, like from central Russia. And also there are tourists from Europe, Europe European countries. Uh, what are three biggest challenges that Yakutia and people are facing today? In my opinion, three biggest challenges are like the first is that it's getting harder and harder to live in the villages. No work in the villages and people who live in the village, they have traditional lifestyle. They have farms and the government used to support people who have um, cows, for example, and horses, but they like reducing their support more and more and many people give up and decide just to leave villages and live in the city. And yeah, I, I know it because my parents are farmers and like there should be a balance between modern life and traditional life. Like we should remember our traditions and take the best from the modern life. And the second challenge is it's about uh, moving of young, talented, smart people from Yakutsk. They move to another country or another city in Russia because they want to improve the quality of their life, their le life, life level. Yeah, and well, it's also kind of sad because we need those people to develop Yakutia. The biggest challenge is that Yakut people start to forget their own language. Like young, especially young people don't want to speak Yakut language. They don't teach their children. Yeah, if we keep this way, Yakut language will disappear in 100 years. So these are our challenges. I would like to ask you about Yakutian knife and what are the traditional tools people use. Do they still use them and make them? This is traditional Yakut knife and every Saha family has one, at least one. And this is very good knife for mm, cutting meat. And uh, it's made by local artisans. And I think I can make an episode about it. It, 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 will, be, it will be very interesting, yeah. This is how it looks. So there are two points a lot of people, myself included, were asking about in Joe's video's comments. Sewer system in Yakuti and burial in Yakuti. Yeah, who is Joe? <laughs> if you don't know, uh, in the end of December, one YouTuber from Jordan, Joe Hattab, visited Yakutsk and I had a chance to meet him and show him Yakutsk. Some of his fans subscribed to my channel and Hey guys, thank you. And if you haven't seen the videos that he made yet, you should check it out because these videos are really, really good. And they are available in my collaboration playlist. 
So talking about sewer system in Yakutia, uh, in the world older bu buildings which were built more than 20 years ago, the water pipes were above the ground. Like and they are, the pipes are covered with warm material. But nowadays the sewer system is underground now. I, I don't really know how, but yeah. In the new houses, the sewer system is underground. Talking about burial in Yakutia, um, we bury people in the ground and even in winter, it's hard to dig the ground in winter, but it's possible. Is the air and water clean or polluted? 10% of wild nature of this world is in Yakutia. It means that we have a lot, a lot of territories which are clean and untouched. Like nothing there, no people, no electricity, no phone service, nothing. And this is one of the things that I love about Yakutia the most. And yeah, I go to the nature and I, I really can feel that I am really in a wild place. I really like to go to nature, like at least for one day. Just forget about the social networks, like no phone service, no anything. And just, you know, spend one day there and the, our air and our water are not polluted yet. That's it for today, guys. Thank you very much for your questions. It was, for me, it was very interesting to answer them, and I hope that for you it was interesting too. And thank you to these people who support me on PayPal and also to my patrons. Thanks to you, I actually bought a new camera. Thank you, guys, and well, like this video. Uh, share it with your friends, comment, subscribe and tap the bell if you don't want to miss another video. Have a nice day and bye!